Hi, my name is Scott Simpson, and this lecture will be focusing on opacities and lucencies with terminology and signs in chest imaging. Disease processes that we can see on chest x-ray and CT are either the result of too much density or too much lucency. Using accurate descriptors when we find these abnormalities is crucial so that we can synthesize a clear differential diagnosis. Here are some commonly seen opacities and lucencies that we can note on chest x-ray and CT. Due to time constraints, these are the opacities that we'll be focusing on, consolidation, ground glass opacity, atelectasis, and nodules and masses. Let's first talk about consolidation. Consolidation is the result of the disease process such as exudate, rendering portions of the lung solid. When we see consolidation on chest x-ray, this opacity will appear as density, that is too much white. It typically will obscure bronchovascular markings. And because airways run through this area of opacified lung, we may see air bronchograms, that is air-filled airways running through the opacity. Because this is in a process that's replacing lung architecture with some sort of solid process, this can result in mass effect. On the right-hand image, we can see a chest x-ray where there's some increased opacity in the right mid-lung zone. This corresponds to an area of consolidation. We could also note that there are some streaky branching lucencies running through the consolidation. These represent air bronchograms, that is air-filled air airways running through an area of consolidation in the lung. When we see these air bronchograms, it helps us localize the opacity as being within the lung parenchyma. On the right is a CT image demonstrating an area of consolidation affecting the left upper lobe. That is, it is an area of lobar consolidation. Notice the increased density within the lung parenchyma. Also note how we cannot see normal bronchovascular markings running through this area of consolidation. Also notice within this consolidation, these branching lucencies. These branching lucencies reflect air bronchograms. These are the structures that we saw on the chest x-ray as the branching lucencies running through that consolidation in the right mid-lung zone. Also notice how there's bulging of the major fissure. The major fissure is back here. There's bulging here because there's mass effect from the product that's accumulating within the lung parenchyma that's creating this consolidation, pushing back on the fissure. We can sometimes see this in the setting of consolidation. This was an example of a left upper lobe lobar pneumonia. Here are two additional examples of what we'd say as widespread consolidation. We see on the top image multiple areas of dense opacity within the lung parenchyma. On the lower image, these opacities appear predominantly in the dependent portions of the lung. Both of these patients had acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. There are multiple causes for consolidation, both acute and subacute or chronic. Typically, when we see consolidation, the findings are often acute, with the most common causes being pneumonia, aspiration, ARDS, or pulmonary infarction in the setting of pulmonary embolism. Let's compare consolidation out of ground glass opacity. Ground glass opacity on CT appears as areas of increased lung density that does not obscure or distort underlying bronchovascular markings. On the right-hand image, we can see that there is an area of increased lung density throughout the left upper and lower lobes. The area of more loosened lung down here is actually normal lung. All this area in here represents ground glass opacity. This could be the result of partial filling of air spaces, similar to consolidation. However, ground glass opacity could also be the result of interstitial thickening. That is, lines within the lung that are too small to resolve by CT. And because they're too small to resolve by CT, they blend together to create kind of a hazy appearance of the lung parenchyma. There are also some additional causes of ground glass opacity, such as partial collapse of alveoli, that is, incomplete atelectasis. You could also see increased lung density, that is, ground glass appearing, from the result of increased capillary blood volume. Typically, when we think about ground glass opacities, we typically um, attribute them to either partial filling of alveolar air spaces or interstitial thickening. On the right-hand image, we can see again all this ground glass opacity. Let's blow up one area to get a closer look. The zoomed-in image again demonstrates the ground glass opacity as this generalized vague area of increased density within the lung parenchyma. Again, notice how it is not a distort or obscure underlying bronchovascular markings, and then contrast this to the more loosened appearing normal lung on the left-hand side. 
Here's a CT example where we could see that there are patchy areas of ground glass opacification within the left lower lobe. This is an example of someone that had a pneumonia. Ground glass opacity is typically a term that's reserved for CT imaging. However, when ground glass opacity is present on CT imaging, we could sometimes see that on chest radiograph. This is an example of someone that had diffuse ground glass opacities on CT. On chest x-ray imaging, you can notice that there's these vague areas of increased lung density that's seen bilaterally in a perihilar distribution. This patient had HIV and was diagnosed with PCP pneumonia. Causes of ground glass opacity are again easily divided as to whether or not they are acute or subacute, similar to consolidation. There are multiple causes that are listed here. In the acute setting, some common causes that we consider are pulmonary edema, hemorrhage, pneumonia, particularly some of the interstitial pneumonias such as PCP or viral pneumonias, and acute lung injury. On the subacute or chronic side, we consider some interstitial lung diseases. To go further into detail at this point would be beyond the scope of this lecture. Let's now talk about atelectasis, another cause for lung opacity. As opposed to consolidation or ground glass opacity, which may represent interstitial or alveolar filling, atelectasis is the opposite. It represents normal but airless lung. Atelectasis could either be subsegmental, that is involving a subsegment of a lobe, can be involving a whole lobe, such as lobar atelectasis, or involve the entirety of one lung, so whole lung atelectasis. On the right-hand image, we have a chest x-ray that demonstrates areas of increased lung density at the bases. Notice how these base opacities appear as streaky opacities, that is, they appear somewhat linear. We can see this here on the right. We could also notice them on the, on the left. This is what we call subsegmental or plate-like or discoid atelectasis. We see this very commonly in the setting of low lung volumes, which you note that this patient has. Here's a zoomed in image of the right lower lobe. And again, we can see these streaky opacities of increased density at the lung base. These again represent areas of subsegmental atelectasis, that is airless lung. On this chest x-ray, we notice that there's an area of increased opacity seen in the right upper lung zone. We also notice how the fissure, the minor fissure, is being pulled up towards the opacity. This is because there's volume loss. Also notice how the opacity is very uniform in appearance. This is an example of right upper lobe lobar atelectasis. That is, the whole lobe is collapsing. This is a different appearance from what we saw previously with subsegmental atelectasis. On the right, we have a CT image demonstrating an area of increased lung opacity. Notice how the, ma the major fissure on the left is pulled towards the abnormality. The major fissure on the right is difficult to see in this image, but lives in this area back here. On the left, it's been moved up towards the opacity, again, indicating volume loss. This is what lung looks like when there's no air inside of it. It looks like a solid organ. This is another case of upper lobe atelectasis, but on the left. This was the result of a centrally obstructing tumor. This is a coronal contrast enhanced chest CT. We know that it's contrast enhanced because we could see bright vessels. This is an example of left lower lobe lobar atelectasis. Notice how there's opacity within the lung with the fissure being displaced towards it. Also notice how the vessels are all clustered together. They're clustered together because the lung is airless. There's less volume there. So the vessels are close together. Compare this to how the vessels look within the normal lung parenchyma. See how evenly spaced they are. They're further apart. And the atelectasis, the vessels are all close together. Also notice how bright the lung parenchyma is compared to musculature. This is because the lung parenchyma contains numerous capillaries. It will avidly enhance. Atelectasis, therefore, we expect to enhance as opposed to consolidation, which would not enhance. Remember, consolidation usually reflects areas of disease process filling alveoli. And we typically don't expect that process, such as pus from pneumonia, to be enhancing. This is a chart of all the different opacities that we had just discussed, consolidation, crown glass opacity, and atelectasis, their causes and appearance on CT and chest x-ray. We'll not be going through this, but you could pause the video at this time to re-review this information. Let's now discuss nodules and masses. We define these as being round or spherical on chest x-ray or CT. We subdivide these into micronodules that is less than three millimeters, uh, three millimeters in size or less. And this is somewhat of an arbitrary distinction. We can see sometimes people quoting numbers higher than this. Masses as being greater than three centimeters or 30 millimeters and nodules anything in between those two. On the right hand image, we could see an example of a CT. 
we see multiple small nodules within the lung parenchyma. This is an example of micronodules. These nodules appear solid and well-defined. This is an example of sarcoidosis. This is a CT image demonstrating multiple nodules and masses within the lung parenchyma. Distinguishing between nodules and masses in this case is probably of less importance. These are all caused from the same process. In this case, it was due to metastatic colon cancer. Not only do we want to discuss nodule size, we also want to talk about their density. That is, are they solid, part solid, ground glass, or even cavitary? Here are three different examples of three different textures of nodules. The nodule on the top image, seen here, represents a solid nodule. The nodule that we see here has both a solid component that we could see centrally, but if we look at the edges of the nodule, we also notice that there's some ground glass opacity. This is what we describe as being a part solid nodule, that is both solid and ground glass. The nodule that we see on the right-hand image over here is what we describe as being a ground glass nodule, that is without solid components. It's important to make these distinctions as follow-up and likely etiologies are dependent on not only nodule size, but also their density. Let's now talk about some signs that we could see in the setting of opacities. This is an example of where we could see that there's a solid nodule with surrounding ground glass. This is part solid. The solid center with the surrounding ground glass is what we describe as being a halo sign. That is, there's an area of surrounding ground glass opacity that looks like a halo. When we see a halo sign, there are some specific things that we could think about. Some causes that can do this include metastatic disease, particularly those that are very um, vascular, such as thyroid, renal, cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Some infections, particularly invasive aspergillus in the setting of neutropenic fever, and then some inflammatory conditions, such as vasculitides. This was an example of a hemorrhagic thyroid metastasis. This chest x-ray looks similar to the case of vertebral lobe atelectasis that we saw beforehand. However, the shape of the minor fissure that's being pulled towards the opacity appears somewhat different. Notice how the outer and lateral portions appear concave. That's because of the volume loss. However, the more central and medial portions appear convex, and that's due to mass effect. So we have two forces acting here, one pulling the fissure and then one pushing the fissure. The shape of the fissure resembles a backwards S, hence the name reverse S sign. When we see this, the diagnosis of exclusion is a lung cancer. That is the lung cancer occluding an airway, creating the mass effect here, resulting in the atelectasis. The next most appropriate step would be to get a contrast enhanced chest CT to look for that centrally obstructing lesion. So some of these opacities we've covered, consolidation, ground glass opacity, atelectasis, and nodules and masses. Let's now move on to lucencies. The lucencies that we'll be focusing on are emphysema, cysts, and cavities. Emphysema represents areas of focal lung destruction. Because they're areas of focal lung destruction, the lucencies that they create will not have identifiable walls. On the right-hand CT image, we see areas of focal lung lucency manifesting as small holes within the lung. These holes do not have identifiable walls. This is an example of what we describe as being central lobular emphysema, which is typically greatest in the upper lung zones and is related to smoking. Here's a magnified image of central lobular emphysema, where again we can see these discrete lucencies within the lung parenchyma. Notice how there's not clearly identifiable walls. On chest x-ray, it can be difficult to identify emphysema, so at first we look for secondary signs, such as increased lung volumes. Notice how large the lung parenchyma is. Then we could also look for areas of increased lucency. Notice how the upper lung zones appear very dark compared to the lower lung zones. This is because the lung is destroyed up here. As the result, the vessels seen in this area are not well seen. Where we look in the lower lung zones, we notice that the vessels are much easier to identify. This is an example of central lobular upper lung zone emphysema, where we can see the dark areas being the emphysema, and then the vessels being larger in the lower lung zones than the vessels in the upper lung zones, which are barely visible. A cyst, on the other hand, is a focal lucency within the lung parenchyma with an identifiable wall. This is a CT image demonstrating multiple cysts within the lung parenchyma. We notice these cysts in some areas here. Let's focus on one specific area to get a closer look. 
Here's an example of that cyst. And notice that there's a lucency, but compare this to emphysema where we did not notice a wall. In this case, we could see a clearly identifiable wall. Let's compare and contrast two cases of cystic lung disease and emphysema. The right lung demonstrates multiple cysts, the left lung demonstrates emphysema, and let's blow up two areas to compare them. Notice how this image demonstrates holes within the lung with clearly identifiable walls. These represent cysts. As opposed to the lung over here, where there are holes in the lung, but a lot of them don't have any identifiable walls. The one on the left is an example of cystic lung disease, and on the right, an example of central lobular emphysema. Cystic lung diseases are considered to be very rare. There are some that we see in our clinical practice. This is lymphangiomyomatosis, pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis, and lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. Whereas cysts can occur de novo within the lung parenchyma, cavities represent areas of previously solid lung that underwent necrosis and liquefaction. The walls are typically thick, thicker than cysts, and they can be irregular or even nodule. And like cysts, they can either be single or multiple. This is a CT image where we can see that there's an area of lucency within a solid opacity. The solid opacity underwent necrosis and then cavitation. This is an example of a cavitary mass within the lung parenchyma representing a squamous cell carcinoma. Here's a CT image demonstrating multiple solid nodules within the lung parenchyma as well as cavitary nodules within the lung parenchyma. This is again a person with metastatic disease from colon cancer. Identifying cavitation on chest x-ray can be quite difficult, even when we know it's present. This is an example of someone that had increased lung opacity with air bronchograms. This person had a multilobar pneumonia. However, within the areas of consolidation, we notice that there's these branch, these areas of lucency. So we can see a confluent one here, an air fluid level here. These are areas of cavitation. This person had a cavitary multifocal pneumonia from MRSA. Causes for cavities are multiple, ranging from cancer, some infections, as well as some inflammatory processes, including vasculitis. In conclusion, describing findings accurately in chest radiology is critical in synthesizing accurate reports. What we discussed today is a fraction of the accepted terminology in chest imaging. For additional details, please refer to this article by Hansel, a glossary of terms for thoracic imaging, where additional details regarding these findings can be found. Thank you for your time. If there's any questions, please feel free to email me at scott.simpson at uphs.upenn.edu.